In this video I'm going to run through why the intersection of the unit circle with the surface of H of Z indicates the frequency response of the system. In other words, we can take samples of the H of Z surface along the yellow contour produced at the points of intersection, starting at location 1 plus 0 J, which corresponds to a frequency of 0 rods per second, and then moving around the unit circle in an anti-clockwise direction to build up a picture of the magnitude response of a system. You should note that the frequency associated with each sample is equal to the angle associated with the sample location. You should also note that the negative frequencies associated with the system can be determined in a similar manner by moving in a clockwise direction. Why we can do this can be understood from a mathematical perspective if you already appreciate that performing a Fourier analysis on the impulse response of a system gives you the frequency response. Now, the discrete time Fourier transform of the impulse response H of n is given as H of omega is equal to the summation of the product terms resulting from the multiplication of H of n by e to the minus j omega n over values of n from 0 up to infinity, where omega is the frequency in radians per sample and n is the sample number. As a practical example, the magnitude frequency response of a 4-tap moving average system is shown over the range of frequencies from minus 2 pi to 2 pi radians per sample, with some of the calculations shown on the screen. Note that the frequency of pi radians per sample corresponds to fs over 2 hertz, which is the Nyquist frequency, and that continuous signals above this frequency which are sampled at fs hertz will be aliased. Also notice that the frequency response repeats every 2 pi radians per sample. Since e to the power of j omega x is equal to e to the power of j omega x plus k by 2 pi, where k is an integer. And I'll get back to this repeating feature later on. Pairing this equation with the unilateral version of the z-transform of h of n, we can see that the equations are very similar, are in fact identical when z is equal to e to the power of j omega. So h of omega is equal to h of z when z is equal to e to the power of j omega. And evaluating e to the power of j omega for different values of omega and displaying these values on the argon diagram shows that these values form a unit circle. So this is why the frequency response of a system is the intersection of the surface of h of z with a cylindrical surface which surrounds the unit circle. So by evaluating h of z around the unit circle we can obtain the frequency response. And the beauty of the unit circle is that it captures the repeating elements of the frequency response of a system. This is in contrast to its continuous domain counterpart, the Laplace transform, in which the spectrum doesn't repeat. In the next video, I'll show the relationship between the Z-transform and the Laplace transform.